Hello and welcome to this video demonstration of the labial bow. This is an ideal labial bow, one used typically in a holy retainer or for the retentive phase of treatment. It's made from 0.7 or 0.8 stainless steel wire, contacts all the teeth in the arch and has two equal sized U loops that follow the shape of the arch. The holy retainer is used at the end of treatment therefore the arches that you see on the models are usually ideal in shape the teeth are in the position that they've been moved to at the end of treatment and this component is purely there to keep them in that position and to prevent any relapse to retain the teeth in their new positions hence the term retainer so with some 0.7 millimeter wire we form it with our fingers no need to use pliers here, some people do, but you can use your fingers and thumbs here just to create a shape uh, that's a nice uniform arch that fits around the teeth in question and just contacts. This is not a fitted labial bow, this is a labial bow that has nominal contacts with all teeth. It should just contact, otherwise the teeth will be free to move and that's uh, against the principles of this component. It should contact each tooth only in one area. It should fit halfway up along the um, labial surface uh, but sh you should take care not to interfere with any gingival margin perhaps that may have been inflamed following the fixed treatment if there was any and you should also ensure that the labial bow follows the occlusal plane is nice and level and horizontal. It shouldn't have a wavy appearance. Mark off on the canine or the middle of the canine um, the position that we need the first U-loop and then by carefully repositioning the model and the wire back on the model we'll see that you won't be able to fit it on the model because the land and the model is in, in the way so we take a guesstimate if you like here as to where or how long we need this U-loop to be and then following the um, arch shape we use some spring forming pliers and the round part of the spring forming pliers to form a U-loop and here we can see that we follow the arch if the arch was continue as an imaginary line we're following that through and we make half of the U-loop we don't make all of it this allows us to position it back on the model and check that we've got A the right height and B the right direction of our U-loop so we reposition our bow making sure it's on the right position look at the height of that U-loop you see it fitted on the model there because we bent that uh, tail of wire out of the way and it was in the correct place so we continue making our U-loop until both arms or straight parts of the U-loop are parallel and that the U-loop isn't contacting any of the tissue the only thing that touches the tissue here is the labial bow part that contacts the teeth the U-loop should be away from the actual tissue themselves so they don't interfere or rub on the tissue the bend from the labial bow down to the U-loop should be 90 degrees and the two parts of the U-loop should be parallel to one another. The U-loop should be uniform in shape and spaced from the tissue. The second part of the U-loop should follow um, the arch and form a, a part through the actual embrasure so it will follow it will be um, it will be fitted behind the canine and just mesial to the four or mesial to the five whichever tooth is next here I'm just bending excess wire out of the way so it doesn't get in the way of the pallet checking that the model is um, the wire and the model are in the right location to with relationship to one another and here you can see the wire fits through nicely through the embrasure in front of the five in this case Now this wire is actually a little distally placed so we're just going to mark off where it contacts through the embrasures and just push that wire measly slightly and down so that it doesn't interfere with any of the tooth or teeth around it. These are small gentle bends, nothing huge, nothing big. Small bends that have been corrected easily but managed to put the wire into the right place. Here I'm marking off again where the wire meets the um, tissue and just following the anatomical shape of the pallet down. We don't have to follow it exactly 
This isn't a contoured bow, we just need that tagging to go down into the palette. But please ensure that there is a space beneath this tagging wire and the palette to allow the acrylic to wrap around. Reposition it again carefully, always back to the first point, and then checking that there is a space between the U loop and that the tag follows through the embrasure. Once we're happy with one side, we turn it around, mark off the same point on the opposing three, make a 90 degree bend from the labial bow, and again, we won't be able to fit this on the model now because it's going to hit the land. There it is and then we just take our spring forming pliers and start to form the loop. Here I just made that 90 degree loop a little bit big, a little bit acute, so I was just straightening that out first. Again with the U-loop, imagine where the U-loop is going to be and where the teeth are. So position it back on the model, think right that's the shape and the position of the arch. I need my U-loop to go back in that direction Right here, and we just start the U-loop off. We bend half of the U-loop. This enables us to try it on and to make any adjustments in length or direction or size of that U-loop without having to start again. I've drawn all my labour bow on to this model, as you can see and it's always a good idea to draw it on certainly when you're training so that you've got something to follow so whenever you take the wire off always ensure you fit it back on to the model in the same place otherwise you can't be sure that you're uh, making the bend in the exact place that you need to If you're ever in any doubt of the fit of the wire onto the model, just go back a stage, undo maybe a bend that you did, and just check that everything is in position where you want it. So a nice space beneath the um, U-loop, and then we're just going to mark off where the wire needs to be bent so it comes through that embrasure without interfering uh, with either teeth next to it. So a gentle bends through the embrasure, and again a sharp bend up. If the wire springs off, don't worry, pick it up, put it back on again. Shouldn't have caused any damage. And then we can look again. The wire's moved along, so we mark off again where we want that wire to go. tagging as it comes through between the teeth essentially needs to ensure that it doesn't interfere with any of the tooth positions. It has a space beneath it so that the acrylic can wrap around and follows quite closely the um, contour of the palette. A good rule of thumb um, I always use is that whatever size wire you're using is the space you should have beneath it. So this is 0.7 wire so I'm trying to make sure there's about enough wire to enough space to pass a piece of 0.7 wire underneath it but that's a guideline. So just some final adjustments just to ensure that the wire does um, contour to the palette allows us to fit the whole component onto the model without any springiness. It shouldn't jump off the model, you should just be able to hold it on there with one finger and it should stay in place. The wire should contact all the teeth, the U-loop should be equal in height, size and length 